welcome back to the Asian News, and here are some of the latest news for you. Timor-Leste's Court of Appeal approved 17 parties to compete in the parliamentary elections. 17 political parties were confirmed by the Timor-Leste's Court of Appeal after the final checklist. The parties will be competing in the upcoming May 2023 parliamentary elections. There were 20 parties proposed, but three was removed from the list as it did not meet the criteria set. The candidate list presented to the Court of Appeal complied 10 days of the deadline. Therefore, the Court of Appeal issued a decision of 20s from the candidate list. However, 17 were admitted through a plenary of the Court of Appeal in order to compete in May 21st, 2023 elections. There were three lists which was not admitted by the Court through a plenary was the Coalition Party of AD. As it stated before, there should not be any coalition as each party has possessed its own rule. And as well, there were two candidates list from Frente Mudansa, where the law also not allowed party to submit more than one candidate list. The 17 Timorese political parties admitted by the Court of Appeal in order to compete in the May elections are PDN, PLPA, PLP, PD, Kunto, PVT, UDT, PUDD, PR, Underteam, Fretolin, CNRT, CASTT, MLPM, PST, PDC, and APMT. However, the Frente Mudanza party was crossed out as it presented to candidates list, which was not allowed by the Court of Appeal. Myanmar marks Armed Forces Day with military parade. During a speech on Armed Forces Day to mark the 78th anniversary of the founding of its national army, Myanmar's junta chief Ming Oholein said lawful actions will be taken against terrorist opposition forces. The military, known as the Tatmado, celebrated with a parade of troops and weapons in the capital Napidiao for the third year. I would like to remind the lawful actions will be decisively taken against the NUG, National Unity Government of Myanmar, and terrorist organizations and some EAOs, ethnic armed organizations, sponsoring terrorism. Thus, martial law is increasingly being imposed in important townships that needed to be controlled during the second phase of the state of emergency. Meanwhile, the U.S. Treasury Department said the United States recently announced further sanctions against Myanmar, targeting the supply of jet fuel to Myanmar's military following airstrikes in civilian populated areas. Singapore explores more possibilities for China and ASEAN cooperation. According to the Singaporean Prime Minister Li Xianglong, Singapore as a member of the ASEAN can explore more possibilities in facilitating China and ASEAN cooperation. China and ASEAN are each other's largest trading partner, with the trade volume between the two economies having increased a hundredfold over that of 30 years ago. Well, we are one member of ASEAN. There are 10 members. We are nearly the smallest. So we have a modest conception of our role in ASEAN, but we will participate in it fully and uh, uh, try to help it um, to move forward. Apart from participating in ASEAN, one of the ways we help is by uh, showing the potential of what can be done. So we have a Singapore-China FTA. I mean, it has, it has agreements and provisions, and there's an ASEAN-China FTA. And I think when you're negotiating with one country, it's not so complicated as negotiating with a group of 10. <laughs> right. And therefore, you can uh, go uh, faster and, um, uh, and further, but it shows what can be done. And therefore, it's an encouragement when working with ASEAN to say, look, it is possible. Singapore has done it. We found it good. China has found it workable. Why not think about it? And so that's one way in which Singapore can help to push the ASEAN-China cooperation forward. Lee highlighted that the economic and non-economic ties, which include political and security agenda, complement each other, both of utter importance in the overall relationship between China and ASEAN. I think the ASEAN-China cooperation also depends on the overall economic cooperation, also depends on the overall relationship. Between, because between China and ASEAN, it's not just economic issues, but you also have uh, discussion on political issues and security issues, and there are some uh, pro problems which need to be worked upon. 
I mean, for example, we are discussing the code of conduct on the South China Sea. That's something which is not easy to, to, to work out, but we've been working on it and we hope to make further progress. Between ASEAN and China, the relations are good, but the more we can deal with the non-economic issues well, I think the more the economic relations can prosper. And it works the other way around too. If we can have good economic ties, I think there's more incentive for us to resolve the other problems. China and ASEAN elevated their relations to a comprehensive strategic partnership on November 2022 last year, with cooperation strengthening from the dimensions of peace, security, development, ecological civilization, and people-to-people -people exchanges. Singapore serves as a control tower for Chinese companies in Southeast Asia. In an interview with China Central Television, CGTN, Singaporean Prime Minister Li Xianglong said Singapore will serve as a control tower for Chinese companies in Southeast Asia as China deepens its economic ties with the region. Well, there's no doubt that China's rise has been an enormous benefit to Southeast Asia. Nearly every country in Southeast Asia has China as its biggest trading partner. Singapore does too. And that's a tremendous economic opportunity. Uh, Singapore has, I think, a disproportionate, pays disproportionate attention to this. And in the early years, I think we were perhaps moving faster than the others in developing the economic relationship. Singapore grew to an important economic, financial, transport, and petrochemical hub and achieved outstanding results under the leadership of Lee Kuan Yew, who also promoted Singapore's deep participation in the great process of China's reform and opening up. Vietnamese artist paints pictures of heroism to document and remember their sacrifice in war of the new generation. Vietnamese artist Dang Ai Viet, 75, is on a mission. She wants to paint portraits of as many heroic mothers, women recognized as someone who has made significant contribution during the Vietnam War as possible. <laughs> It would be difficult for the generation who are born after all the struggle and sacrifice was done, that those who paid the price were their own father, uncle or grandparents, and because of their sacrifices, their mothers became heroic. A pain so that the current generation and the ones after will have a chance to see the look in the eyes of a mother who lost more than one of her sons. <laughs> Viet, who joined the Viet Cong at 15 as a guerrilla fighter, says she considers herself as part of their story and understands the sacrifices of war. Estimates of casualty during the Vietnam War vary widely, but reach into the millions. The Vietnamese government has said it claimed the lives of up to 4 million people, while the U.S. Defense Ministry has said 58,000 U.S. troops were killed. The war itself is remembered for having an extremely high percentage of civilian deaths. More than a hundred Rohingya arrived by both in Indonesia's Aceh. Officials said more than 180 Rohingya Muslims landed in Indonesia's Aceh province this week, the latest among hundreds who have fled by boat from desperate conditions in Myanmar and in camps in Bangladesh. Local police Yusuf Hasriadi told Reuters that at least 175 Rohingya refugees were found by authorities upon arriving in East Aceh district, while 13 others were still unaccounted for. <laughs> Nearly 1 million Rohingya live in crowded conditions in Bangladesh, among them who fled a deadly crackdown in 2017 by Myanmar's military, which denies committing crimes against humanity. China Media Group holds symposium on Chinese modernization in Singapore. China Media Group Asia Pacific hosted a symposium on Chinese modernization and new opportunities for the world in Singapore, at which guests from business, academic and media sectors from Singapore and ASEAN countries shared insights on China's development. Tsang Chuming, Charles the First at the interim of China's embassy in Singapore said that China's high-quality development will give a strong impetus to regional development allowing China and ASEAN to achieve a win-win situation. 
In addition, Tan Kong Yam, professor of economics at Nanyang Technological University, highlighted that as ASEAN's largest trading partner, China achieved economic recovery and a strong rebound in the beginning of 2023 that will help ASEAN through an increasingly volatile and uncertain global trade environment. Meanwhile, Tzu Cao Cheng, Managing Director of the Singapore Chinese Chamber of Commerce said, China offers a new interpretation of social development model showing the world how a country with a huge population takes lead in many fields while ensuring social stability. The city of Chiang Mai Airport is routed in pollution from forest burning. Air quality in northern Thailand climbed to hazardous levels as a result of seasonal agricultural burning across in the region. Local media report that 4,115 hotspots were detected in northern Thailand in the past 24 hours. Thailand's Prime Minister Prayu Chan Ocha has mobilized the country's relevant agency to reduce the impact on the Thai public. including enforcing the law to punish perpetrators of forest burning that causes wildfires. And thank you very much everyone for tuning in today. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a nice weekend.